All right. Senator, I've heard that one Nashville institution has been trying to recruit a new top leader all year, and after this legislative session, all the three front runners took their names out of the hat. Are you worried about the city's reputation in terms of recruiting and retaining top execs, doctors, other professionals? I, I think we have to be worried about the future of the city and its ability to recruit and retain talent. And I think that there are two big causes of that. One is that we are a capital city that is undergoing an unprecedented level of conflict with the state government where we sit. This is a nonsensical type of arrangement. It's like getting in a fight with your spouse and burning down the garage to get even. It makes you feel good for a second, but probably doesn't work out in the end for, for either party. And I think we have to get that relationship on the right track. The other thing is this is a high stakes moment for the city where if we don't get the, the future right at this inflection point, we can be a city that just doesn't address the long-term issues like affordability and transportation and start seeing decline, or we can become a sprawling mess. And I think if we don't actually have real leadership, both in the, in the city government and across some of our civic institutions, this is gonna be a hard time. Um, the prior administration has focused on closing encampments and providing rapid rehousing for those living there. Do you think that works well? And how would you focus on the unhoused? So we actually do know what works when it comes to dealing with the unhoused population in cities. We should be following the examples of cities that have made gigantic strides here, like Houston, like Atlanta, like Milwaukee. And I think that the policy that we've adopted is the right one, housing first. You know, cities tend to go through two stages. First, they spend a lot of time trying to make homelessness less visible. And that means running people through ERs and county jails and temporary shelters. That ends up costing a lot, a lot of money and ends up growing the population of unhoused. Housing first is a smarter pathway to do it. But to do it right, if you look at the cities and talk to the leaders in those cities, what they say the key of their success is, is that they haven't done it from the government alone. They've had actual alignment across their nonprofit providers, their faith community, and the private sector as well, so that all boats are rowing in the same direction. Have you, um, do you think the behavioral care center approach is working? Look, I think that you have to, in, just doing housing doesn't make sense. I think you've got to make sure that you are providing uh, the access to mental health care, substance abuse treatment, and making sure that someone has the, the pathways to leading a more productive, successful life. So we've been asking about General Hospital. Uh, are you in favor of relocating or building a new hospital, or do you think we can uh, maybe re-up with Meharry but beyond 2027? So I think that is, I'm not gonna beat around the bushes, I think that is one of the hardest issues that we have to deal with, and I don't think that we're at a solution yet. Uh, I, I think that you've got a lot of stakeholders at the table that need to be in the table, and it makes me very nervous for us to commit to a long-term plan when we have numerous stakeholders who aren't uh, on the same page about what the, what the best pathway forward is. I think critically, no one who is going to be mayor sh should do this based on their hunch or quickly or quietly. This is something you have to be in, engaged in intense discussions throughout the community, recognizing both its historic place and the charter's commitment to providing indigenous, uh, uh, to pr providing care for the indigent. One of your opponents just said it was underutilized, General. Well, I look, we're putting a lot of money into, into healthcare, and we know that we are not getting as as good of a healthcare outcomes as we need, need to as a city. And that sort of runs across the board. And so I, I think this needs to be part of a much broader conversation. And, and I think it's not really one that, that I would want to jump into right this second. And if people think that that's a cop out, that's fine. I just think that's actually the responsible way to, to lead the city on this issue. Um, let me pose a scenario, and it's happened in other places. 
What would you do if an elected official from another state sent a busload of undocumented immigrants to Nashville? Well, look, I mean, I think the first thing you do is you respond as a human. Like, we have to treat people who arrive in our city, even if it is by absurd political stunt, we have to treat them like we, like we know what kind of people we are here in Nashville. And I think that's the right thing to do. We are going, if someone comes, like, we're going to, going to actually respond and treat people humanely, but we're also going to, <laughs> going to be back in touch with that uh, sending jurisdiction very quickly and try to work through how do we actually act like adults and try to solve real problems and not just engage in this kind of nonsense that really drives everybody insane about the direction of our politics in this country. You've been around for a long time. You've seen a lot of mayors. Who do you think of our previous mayors has been most effective and why? I mean, look, that is a hard question. So like in the last nine years, I've worked with four and then I uh, have paid a lot of attention to at least two or three uh, administrations before that. I think you're, as mayor, you're trying to build off the success of all of those people. Uh, from a leadership style standpoint, the one I probably admire the most is, is, uh, is Mayor Bredesen, who I think had, uh, did, did a very nice job of sort of setting out, here are the goals that we are trying to achieve as a, as a city. And those are different goals than the ones we face now, but then he set those goals and then tried to bring in public sector, private sector, just smart people from around the city to how do we best achieve those goals? And I think that this is a moment where we are facing really complicated challenges, and we know that the approach we've been doing isn't enough and we have to do more, and I think that type of style is what we need right now. Thinking of smart people, capable people, um who would be your first hire? You know, I don't really think of it as a, as a one-person hire. I think what you're trying to do in a mayor's office is build a team. Uh, step one, and something I, I've been meaning to make this promise for a long time, we should adjust the metro charter so there is an actual transition period so that the mayor can do that. That's not going to be the luxury for the next mayor, so you need to be thinking about it now. I think that you probably should have, in addition to what has traditionally been a deputy mayor that, you know, sort of serves as a surrogate and deals with lots of issues, I think we desperately need someone to be at that sort of senior level and with responsibility over the long-term infrastructure, water, transportation, housing needs of the city, because you can't lose sight of those long-term building projects every time there's a fire, a flood, a shooting. And we, got, we have to be, be mindful of that long-term long thinking in that office at a senior level. Do you think any of, this, of these city departments are sort of crowded? Do we need new ones? Do we need to separate some uh, responsibilities out of, let's say, water and solid waste? I, I, I'm not convinced that, that solid waste belongs in the water department. Uh, that, that, that has not made sense to me, and I'm not sure that it makes sense to either solid waste or water. But, uh, look, I, I, don't, I, don't want, I don't want to be in the business of creating a lot of new offices, but we have 50-something departments. Like, we can make this a little bit cleaner and make it make a little bit more sense. Are we at 30 yet? Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, who do you... You've been out to a lot of schools, I would imagine. Has one struck you as being more outstanding than another? Oh, wow. Uh, I mean, that is a question that no politician should ever answer, I guarantee <laughs> you. So, and I've spent a lot of time in a lot of high schools over the years, uh, and elementary schools. I mean, look, I'm, my favorite place is the ones where I drop off my children, which are Sylvan Park and MLK. But, uh, I mean, one that, that has struck me that I think has actually made, taken great advantage of the development of the recent years and genuinely improved things, I think are two in East Nashville, Rosebank and Warner, I think are really remarkable success stories where we have seen uh, changes really happen and it shows you what happens when you have good leadership, smart community planning, and I think both of those you know, give signs of things, examples of what we should be proud of and be looking to do more of. All right, here's your 30-second mark. 
Uh, I'm Jeff Yarbrough. I would like to ask for your vote because this is a high stakes election. Uh, you've heard lots tonight and you'll hear a lot throughout this campaign from people who are saying that they're gonna do a lot of things, but in me, you're, you would be voting for a mayor who's got experience actually doing this work. For the last nine years, I've been building coalitions, finding common ground, and getting things done on affordable housing, on transit, on childcare, on all the issues facing our city. I know how to get work done, and I think that's exactly what the next mayor has to do. And so I ask for your vote, I ask for you to keep, keep watching this campaign, and uh, ask for all of us to come together and help make this city everything that it can be. Jeff, thanks so much for being here. Thanks so much.